Hello, this video will give you a basic overview of our proof of delivery mobile app. If you have any questions that are not answered in this video, please contact your supervisor. So the first thing you're going to do is open up the ODT mobile app by double clicking. The username is WMS and the password is 2000 and this will be the same for all drivers. Select sign in and this brings you to your home screen. Um, here your first step is going to be uh, selecting a vehicle so on your board you'll have your vehicle number um, that you're going to have for the day so if you hit this uh, little arrow key uh, next to the vehicle number uh, you select your branch, so we're going to select GR, hit next, and then this is going to give you a list of all the different vehicles available to select. Now again, it's very important that you select the vehicle that is on your board, um, so that way the uh, appropriate routes um, show up for you for the day. So um, we're going to go ahead and just select uh, 12, 5, 6, 7, and um, next you put in the driver name. Um, don't have to worry about the trailer or any special equipment. Um, so from here you hit next. And as you can see um, at the top it selected a different vehicle number than what it had automatically in there. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to inspections. Um, so your pre-trip inspections, um, it's that middle circle. Uh, from here, um, it displays the history. Um, I can review past inspections or look at new inspections. So I'm going to select new inspection. And here I'm going to put in the mileage and the engine hours um, next I'm going to hit general condition so this just has some options that you can choose um, if everything is okay just leave them blank but if there is an issue with one of these go ahead and put a check mark next to it uh, for this purpose I'm just going to uh, leave it blank so you close that back down, and then next you go to the end cab. You open that. Same thing. Um, if everything is okay, just leave it blank. If something is wrong, select one or um, as many things that are in wrong for the truck. Next is the exterior. You go through the same thing. Um, leave it blank if everything's okay. Um, so if everything was okay here, I'm going to hit next. Put any remarks in here. I'm just going to put in all OK. Um, and then there's a little radio button. You press that. Condition of uh, the above vehicle is satisfactory. And then I'm going to sign my signature here. Hit save. Um, I can also take a picture of the truck, um, but if everything is fine, it's not really necessary. Now, if you did have an issue um, with the truck, let's say it's... Um, you know, something to do with the tires, um, and it's pretty obvious, um, you would select that condition as, as bad, um, and then you can take a picture of whatever was wrong with uh, the tire or anything else that you may come across. Um, so I'm going to hit next, and this gives me a summary. Uh, gives me my truck number. just want to make sure I was, you know, again, in the right truck. Um, GR, the driver's name, um, it gives the mileage and the hours, um, three-point inspection verification, all is okay. Here's where I signed uh, my name. Um, now, if you did select something um, and you check this next box where it says above defects need to be corrected for safe operation of vehicle, um, that would have to be selected if your truck is unable to go on the road. Um, you'd still go through your same procedures with your supervisor um, or manager of letting them know, um, you know, what happened and contact STAR um, or, or Penske or whoever the carrier is. So 
Um, still do the same things that you do currently today, um, but this is just a little added step to it. Um, and so that way it requires, um, you know, the verification that it's been fixed. Um, so the next time someone comes in to this truck for an inspection, if something was wrong, um, there's the reviewing driver's signature. Um, so they would uh, review to make sure that that item or action item was fixed. Um, so next you'd hit save an email. Um, so since there wasn't anything really wrong, um, there isn't too much to report, but we still want um, those emailed. Um, so after you do any inspection, uh, regardless if it's um, something wrong or not, just send that um, email. Um, it gets sent to um, a group um, in the ODT admin side um, where we can review those um, inspections or if we're ever requested to show our truck's inspections, we can go back and, and um, get that for whoever's inquiring about it. Um, the post-trip inspection here is the exact same thing as the pre-trip, except you're just doing it at the end of your day. Um, so once you're back to um, you know, your home base, you go ahead and do the post-vehicle inspection. Now, when you do these, you don't have to do them, um, the paper ones anymore. You can just you know, live in this electronic um, signature. Um, that way it's kept forever um, and documented. So. I'm just going to go back. There's no reason for me to fill that out right now. Um, so my next step is to go into uh, my delivery tracking. So delivery tracking is where I really kind of start my day after I do my inspections. Um, so before you put the, um, the truck in gear and before you pull out for the day, um, what you're going to do is you're going to hit start trip. And then it's going to ask you, are you sure or not? So, yes. Um, the next thing that you're going to do is um, then go into manage orders. And here is where um, our orders would uh, display in order. Um, unfortunately for this demonstration, there's only one order in here, but if you had... Um, more than one, they would all display here in a row. Um, and this is in order of um, your delivery. So um, it's your stop sequence um, in order, and I will just uh, touch base on that a little bit. Um, it's important that we go into the sequence of uh, what it shows here because um, the software fires off a, a notification to the customers with an ETA, and if we reroute uh, for some reason and go off the schedule, um, then the customer ETAs are going to be, um, you know, incorrect, and it's going to cause some customer service issues. So uh, part of this whole deal is, um, you know, giving a higher level of customer service to our customers. And so, again, just very important that you follow um, the sequence um, that's on here for your orders. Um, there's going to be some times where it may not make sense, um, or if one or um, two stops are within five miles of each other or um, somewhere really close, um, I would say that's fine because it's not going to impact the ETAs um, too much. But if there's any time where it's like a 20-mile difference, 10-mile difference, or um, depending on the order where you know it's going to make a, a big uh, difference in the time, um, you do need to contact your supervisor uh, to let them know. And we can actually go into the program and resequence it, um, which will display on your app um, after that's been corrected. So um, very important that you follow the stop sequence um, for many reasons. Uh, number one thing is the communication to the customers. Um, and then if you do have um, an issue where you um, run into, you know, there's an accident and, um, you're not able to get to your next stop and it makes more sense to get to go to your, um, the next stop after that first, um, you know, just call, um, Roger or your supervisor and, uh, we can make those changes. Um, all right. So when we're inside, um, here and you go to your first, um, order to deliver, um, it's going to display all of your, um, orders for that customer. So if you have, um, you know, a delivery to a customer and they've got five different sales orders, um, they would all display here. Um, and you can go into each one individually or you can uh, select all 
uh, for all the orders, and I'll go into um, more de details about that here in just a moment. Um, but for this example, I'm just going to select the one here and hit next. Um, so these are delivery options. So um, my first option is on site. So I'm going to select on site. So when I first get uh, to my stop, um, I'm going to, you know, hit next um, if everything is, is fine. But um, let's say if I get on site and, um, you know, it's the wrong address or, you know, something's preventing me from making this delivery, you can go ahead and um, select take picture and just follow the steps. You know, it'll allow you to take a picture and, um, and uh, give you a description of, or you can write a description of what the problem is. Um, so then you just go next. Um, you know, the text here, if everything's fine, you could just bypass this. Um, or you can't. So you got to put something in there. So um, you can just write something simple like here. Um, so now it takes me back to the customer page. Um, so at this point, I'm getting out of my truck and I'm getting the products um, organized um, for their order. And um, I've, let's say, moved everything into the garage uh, for them and the order was 100 100% complete um, and good to go I've checked it off from my paperwork uh, that I have so I'm gonna hit um, that order again that was good and I'm gonna now select delivered so you can change your delivery option um, so I went from on-site and now that everything is verified and delivered and 100% accurate I'm going to choose the delivered option. Um, this first box is going to ask for a signature, so this can be the, the customer signature. Please get that if you, if you can. Um, if there's nobody on site, um, just sign it yourself or put in your initials. Um, hit next. Um, next would be um, you put in the person's name who signed um, or just your initials. Hit submit. Take picture. So you're just going to take a picture of the delivery and you can take multiples. So um, if you can capture as many labels and different viewpoints of the delivery, um, the better. So if there is an issue, we can uh, quickly identify the products that were delivered. Um, or if a customer or salesperson is saying something was missing from the delivery, uh, we can identify uh, the product with um, more pictures that are taken. So as you can see, um, all three pictures displayed. Uh, so I'm going to hit next and then put any text here. Um, like if it was a good delivery, just, you know, you can type in all set or all good, uh, whatever you want to do. Um, if there was an issue, you can put in a note here and I'll dive into that here in just a second. So hit submit. Um, all right, so now that order is um, delivered, and then I can just move on to the next one, which would be underneath the Williams Bay City one, um, if there was more orders um, tied to this um, route. So let's look at the other options. So let's say I go back into this order, and um, I got there, and the customer is just, he, uh, he or she is re refusing the order. So they don't want it anymore. Either it's a duplicate order or, you know, just something they don't want anymore. So you'd hit refused, get the customer signature, save, hit next, type in their name of who refused it, take a picture of the product being refused, hit the little check bar mark, hit next, enter your text. You can just put uh, duplicate. Hit submit. All right, so that's what you would do if it was a refused order. So let's go into a different um, delivery option. So I'm going to select that same order, go back in. And at any time, you can go in and change the, um, the delivery option. So if you go through and you mark delivered and then, um, you know, you missed something on the truck, um, or you notice something on the paperwork, but you already went through and did the uh, delivered option, and you got to make a change, and, oh, actually, I am missing the base 30 cabinet, then you can go in and select a different option. Um, so you can do that anytime. 
Um, the next thing is unable to pick up. So what you'd use that option is for RMAs or um, POs. Um, so if you are, you know, going on your way to pick up an RMA, which RMAs and POs will be in um, your route as well um, in the stop sequence. Um, so, you know, they're not all just sales orders that you see there that you're going to have RMAs and POs as well. So let's say in this case I went to go pick up an RMA. So I get there and, um, you know, I knock down the door, nobody's there, um, garage is locked up, um, there's no way of me um, accessing the return item. Um, so I would just take a picture, um, you know, of everything maybe locked up, hit the check mark, hit next, put text in here, locked up, hit next. And that's it. Um, so it takes you back to your um, main screen with all your different um, deliveries for the day. Now let's go in and look at a different option. Unable to deliver. So this one would be for um, almost the same scenario where maybe everything's locked up and you can't make your delivery. Um, I know there's a million other scenarios that um, could fall into that as well, but um, you just hit unable to deliver and it's really the same process as um, unable to pick up so take a picture of why you can't make the delivery hit next locked up and let's say there is no porch um, or any um, place where you feel comfortable leaving the product so hit submit if you did um, you know make the delivery and um, instead of a garage if the garage was locked up um, and you left it on the front porch, you can indicate that in the notes, um, you know, just put left at front porch. So often we'll get calls into the office saying, um, you know, I had to schedule a delivery. Um, I was told it's going to be put in the garage, but none of the products in there. And we do our research and everything looks like it had been delivered. Um, you know, and sometimes we'll call the driver and the driver goes, oh yeah, I left it on the porch. And which is fine, you know, as long as it's covered and on the product safe. And then we just let the customer know, hey, he put it on the porch and we're all good. So, But if we have those notes ahead of time, then we don't have to call you. Uh, we can just see your notes on there. And so it just makes it more efficient for you and everybody else. All right, so let's look at another delivery option. Incomplete. So I'm going to select this after um, you know I've got all the product out. I've uh, wheeled everything into the garage. And I've checked off everything on the paperwork, except um, it's missing a, a base 30 cabinet. Um, shows it on the paperwork, but I don't have it. It's not in my truck. I verified it's not in my truck. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm still going to get a signature from the customer, um, or I'm going to sign it if there's not a customer um, to sign for it. So save, next, put in the person's name or your initials. Um, you're going to take a picture of the order like you would um, if it was an um, order being delivered. So get as many photos as you can. Um, on your paperwork, the missing item, you can uh, circle that missing item, just write missing um, on there, and then take a picture of the sales or the delivery ticket with your note on it. Hit check mark, hit next, and then here missing base 30 hit submit and done so what that does is um, that indicates to us um, in the office that there was an issue with that delivery we can see that see that almost real time and allows us to be a little bit more proactive um, immediately um, to start the research of why that was missing maybe it was left on the dock maybe it was in the set-aside location um, we might have recovery options of getting it on a hot shot that same day, so it never even becomes an issue for the customer. Um, it's going to save you time uh, from having to re-deliver sometimes. Um, it's going to save you time for not having to field all the calls. Um, so overall, that's going to uh, be a much better experience for the customers um, and for the internal team, customer service team, uh, for everyone. So make sure that you're detailed in those notes and pictures. Um, all right, so let's look at another delivery option that we have, and um, that's picked up. 
So I select that, and again, that's going to be for your RMAs and um, POs. So you'd use this um, the same way as you would with uh, unable to pick up, but just the opposite. So I'm on site, and they have the garage open, and I see a uh, wall 30 that I need to get, which matches my RMA, I get the customer signature, or put in mine if the customer's not available. I put in my initials or the customer's name. Hit submit. I'm going to take a picture of the RMA in the garage or the product in the garage. Hit the check mark. Hit next. And all set was in garage. Whatever notes uh, pertaining to it. Um, hit submit. And that's it. So those are the different delivery options that you have. I, I know that may seem like a lot, but every order you're not going to go through all those you're going to just um, in most cases um, you know maybe have two or three um, options you're going to go through depending on how the delivery went um, so again the first step is on site make sure that um, when you get to the um, delivery uh, destination um, you start with that on site because that signals to um, everybody here and then customer service that you've made it to their location and um, often we get calls for ETAs um, or any other inquiries where the driver's at and um, we can see uh, real time um, oh yeah he's at that stop currently um, just within seconds we can see that so um, and then once you're done um, with unloading your truck and ma making uh, the delivery of the product and everything's good you know or not you make your selection based on how the delivery went um, so again I'm just going to clarify um, when you select that um, customer um, in this example only has one order but if there was multiple it would have every um, order number in here now let's say that all of them were good so I'm going to just select all then and it's going to select all those orders and let's say all of them matched up to the paperwork everything was good no problems so then I'm going to take that um, select all and go through the delivered um, delivery option and take my pictures and do the signature um, and then put any notes in there that you know maybe where you put it and then um, that will match up to all those orders so you don't have to go into every single one separately if everything was fine so it just saves you time doing it that way um, now where you would want to select them separately is if let's say your first order was fine so you you mark that as delivered you took your pictures signature all good then you go to the next order and if that next order had an issue where it was incomplete it would say it was missing that uh, base 30. so that's when you would select that order um, and select the delivery option and complete now let's say that they had an rma as well so you would want to select the rma on there um, separately and um, go through the process with that either is unable to pick up or able to pick up so um, if you have any questions please let us know or let your supervisor know I'm gonna hit back here now some of these icons um, the first one um, will be like grayed out um, when you initially go into the order um, it does have like a little lighter or a tan tone um, to it once you go through a delivery option, once you have a delivery option selected, that, that will appear. Um, but until then, it's kind of grayed out. But So now um, that we did some delivery options on it, I can go into that and just quickly make any changes um, if not necessary. Um, the next option on here is just an information tab. Maybe it's not working here. Well, the information tab would give you the address, customer contact information, um, and where it's at on the map. Um, the next one, the red icon, that'll allow you to change the geofence of the delivery. So let's say it's a new job site and... Um, the address that you have took you um, to one end of the street and the actual house is on the other end of the street. Um, so you, you can, you know, you drive down to where it's actually at. You can hit that uh, change geofence and uh, once you do that, it will save it. So if there's any future deliveries to that location, 
um, it will automatically change that. So either if you got to go or another driver has to go to it, it's it's all set. Um, the next one, which is that blue um, arrow, um, what that's going to do is it's a GPS system. Um, so it just uses your iPad's GPS to take you to the to the next location. Um, after that, um, you've made all your deliveries, got all your pickups, and you're um, coming back. Um, so once you are back and um, you're parked, you're going to hit end trip. And are you sure? Yes. And that's it. Um, that's when, and then after you're done with that, um, that's when you would do your post trip inspection, obviously. Um, other things uh, to run through just real quick is the incident report. So I'm going to select that. Um, make sure it's the correct vehicle that's on there that you're in. Um, and I'm going to hit the green button incident report. Um, what this is for is if you get in an accident, um, if uh, you know a deer hits you or you back up into something, somebody else runs into you, um, you know, you have a flat tire on the road or you have a service that you need, um, you slid off the road, um, anything like that. So you're going to hit the location button and what it's going to do is going to pinpoint um, where you're at um, through GPS. Um, you hit the little um, paper airplane and that sends um, the information. Um, so we have that and then you can take a picture. You can take multiple pictures as well, or you can just retake. Um, you can put in caption, um, you can put in deer, hit submit. It's going to save that image. Um, I can change it, I can trash it. Um, so I'm going to go back. Next, I'm going to fill out any details. 10 point was huge. All right, injuries, name, buck, address, woods, phone number, doesn't really have one. All right, so I got that information. I can go back. Um, if there is a police report, you fill in the police report uh, information. Um, this will also be on a ticket. If there's any ticket or citation, it uh, will be on there as well. Um, so depending on what happened, um, you may or may not have to fill that out. Um, any witnesses? Um, so if you can have a witness of that's willing to give you the information, obviously um, you can't make anybody, but if someone's willing to give you their information, name, address, phone number, um, you don't have to get all of it. So if they don't want to give you their address, that's fine. Um, you can just do name and phone number. Um, and then third party would be the, um, the person, let's say a car slid into you and um, this is where you'd put in their um, name and information. And that's it for incident report. Uh, the last thing uh, to look at here is fuel log. So there's no records found because we haven't used it for this truck um, yet live. Um, so the thing I'm going to do is hit the plus symbol here. I'm going to put in my mileage. And you can change it as well um, if needed, but since it's a first entry, it's not going to really let me do anything else other than the starting. Um, it's got today's date already filled in. Um, you can put in your quantity of gallons. You can put in your cost. Um, so a star doesn't really um, publicly make the cost available um, to you, but we have... Um, that information here so you can just leave that blank if you don't have it but if you're filling up somewhere else where you do have the information please capture that um, and then your state you know just select your state and then any notes um, that you might have um, so that's it
for the fuel log. Um, once you have um, some history 